Released in 1974, It's Alive is a gripping horror film that follows the chilling tale of a monstrous baby born to unsuspecting parents. But what lies beyond the screams and terror of the movie? Stay tuned because we've got plenty of funny, shocking, and even sad facts coming your way. Are there any lesser known facts or anecdotes about this movie that fascinate you? Share them in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories and memories. Keep watching for more intriguing insights into this cult classic. Deeply affecting in its own schlocky way, It's Alive is a cult classic from 1974 directed by Maverick filmmaker Larry Cohen. The premise revolves around the Davis baby, born mutated due to environmental factors, embarking on a murderous rampage. John P. Ryan portrays Frank Davis, the conflicted father determined to stop the infant's reign of terror, while Sharon Farrell delivers a compelling performance as Lenore, the fragile mother. The film delivers thrills while exploring themes of parental devotion amidst horror. Cohen demonstrates a knack for suspense, supported by composer Bernard Herrmann's ominous soundtrack. Rick Baker's makeup effects bring the monster baby to life effectively, cleverly avoiding overexposure to maintain suspense. The thoughtful script delves into the stigma of parental responsibility amid chaos. The cast, including familiar faces like James Dixon and Andrew Dogan, deliver solid performances. The film tackles controversial themes such as abortion, offering somber yet potent entertainment without overtly pandering to the audience. Noteworthy scenes include the baby's encounter with a milkman juxtaposing innocence with brutality. Overall, It's Alive is a chilling exploration of parenthood and societal fears, earning an 8 out of 10 rating. This movie drew inspiration from The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby, as well as Ray Bradbury's 1946 horror story, The Little Assassin, featuring a murderous baby. Larry Cohen opted to reveal the infant sparingly, employing a dummy baby crafted by Rick Baker. The dummy had an aluminum wire armature, enabling articulated limbs and adjustable eyeballs. Initially released with a lackluster advertising campaign in 1974, the film flopped. However, a re-release in 1977 featured an iconic ad campaign showcasing a darkly lit baby carriage with a claw hanging over the edge. TV commercials featuring ominous narration and heartbeat-like music intensified the terror. Consequently, the film became a hit, spawning sequels and a remake. In the realm of cinematic history, there's a tale that speaks volumes about the power of imagination and collaboration. Picture a creature brought to life with an oversized forehead and pulsating veins reminiscent of characters from Space Odysseys and the Wild. This creation, born from the minds of Larry Cohen and Rick Baker, captured the fascination of audiences around the globe. Accompanied by a haunting melody composed by Bernard Herrmann, the movie embarked on a journey that led to approval from Italian censors, marking a pivotal moment in its path to the silver screen. From that point forward, the TV movie mesmerized viewers with its portrayal of fear and the unknown. In the grand story of filmmaking, this creation stands as a timeless reminder of what can be achieved through imagination and teamwork. Every element meticulously crafted to provoke a visceral response ensured its place in the annals of entertainment history. And so, the tale of this remarkable creation endures, a testament to the brilliance that emerges when minds converge in pursuit of storytelling. Daniel Holzman, known for his role as Chris Davis in the 1974 movie, was discovered by writer and director Larry Cohen while performing at a children's playhouse. Cohen invited him to meet and offered him a role after a brief and formal audition. Holzman described Cohen as patient and recalled a memorable direction to throw some water on the kid's puss. He enjoyed working with John P. Ryan, whom he found fatherly, and Sharon Farrell, although he noted she seemed high-strung and once asked him to slap her for a scene. The baby monster's inability to focus its eyes accurately reflects infant development, particularly in infants under two months old. It's Alive was filmed and edited simultaneously with another Larry Cohen feature, Hell Up in Harlem, leading to consecutive seven-day work weeks for many cast and crew members. In one part of the movie, there's a mention of Frankenstein, which might be a nod to the 1931 film. This makes the story more interesting, suggesting themes about making things and taking responsibility. When Charlie goes fishing, his car has a license plate that says WAWJR, likely referring to William O. Wellman Jr., the actor playing Charlie. It seems like a small detail, but it hints at a connection between the character and the actor, maybe showing a personal touch from the filmmakers or just a playful reference to Wellman's role. At first, Larry Cohen wanted to cast Anthony Perkins and Janet Leigh, who were in Psycho together. This would have brought a nostalgic feel for fans of that famous horror movie. 
Perkins and Lee working together again could have added a special dynamic to the characters and made the story more emotional. But as they made the movie, the casting changed and they still managed to capture the audience's attention. All these little references and possible casting choices show how much thought went into making the film. Every detail from the subtle nods to classic horror to thinking about who should play the characters adds to the overall story. It makes the movie interesting and makes you think. It just goes to show how creative the filmmakers were and how much they cared about making a story that connects with the audience in different ways. In the end, these things come together to make it alive a movie that stands out in the horror genre. In the making of the film, Rick Baker crafted an oversized body cast of the infant. Using his wife as the model due to her availability, and his workspace being his garage. Larry Cohen, the director, pitched the film concept to Baker over the phone while Baker was at Dick Smith's house, who was working on effects for The Exorcist at the time. Cohen suggested creating a baby suit that could be worn by Baker's cat or a chicken or something. For close-up shots, Baker made a full head mutant infant mask, gloves, and a partial body suit worn by his then-girlfriend and later wife Elaine Alexander. Released in 1974, a certain horror movie holds a chilling fact. One scene featured a baby's cry so lifelike that it triggered a panic attack in a new parent among the audience, showcasing the film's ability to evoke genuine fear and emotion. The story revolves around a couple's joyful anticipation of parenthood turning into a nightmare. As the mother gives birth, they face a grotesque and murderous offspring, setting off a series of terrifying events. Directed by Larry Cohen, the film delves into themes of parenthood, fear of the unknown, and societal prejudices. Through its shocking portrayal of a mutant baby causing chaos, the movie challenges viewers to confront their deepest fears and contemplate compassion and humanity's boundaries. With its raw depiction of maternal instincts gone awry, the movie remains a significant work in horror, leaving a lasting impression on audiences and inspiring numerous imitations. In an unexpected twist, a surprising trivia about the film emerges. Despite its limited budget and modest expectations, the movie managed to evoke strong emotional reactions from audiences, particularly during its sad moments. The story portrays the struggles of a couple faced with the birth of a mutant baby, forcing them to confront societal biases and their own parental instincts. Directed by Larry Cohen, the filmmaker employs a distinctive storytelling style focusing on character development and atmosphere rather than elaborate special effects. Despite its initial reception, the film has garnered a devoted following and is considered a classic of 1970s horror cinema, influencing subsequent films in the genre for years to come. It remains a must-watch for horror enthusiasts and movie buffs alike, showcasing the power of storytelling and the lasting appeal of horror cinema. In an unexpected twist, audiences were taken aback by the 1974 film's portrayal of a mutated baby. The movie tells a heartbreaking story of this abnormal infant, stirring feelings of sadness alongside horror. It reminds us how life can be full of surprises and emotions can be complicated. Directed by Larry Cohen, this film continues to be a haunting reminder of how love and fear can blur together when faced with the unknown. In a surprising turn of events, a 1974 movie faced severe censorship and was prohibited in multiple countries due to its portrayal of a mutant baby causing chaos. Despite these challenges, the film gained a dedicated following among horror fans. The movie's dark exploration of parental fears and societal rejection struck a chord with viewers, making it a memorable yet tragic addition to the horror genre. The tragic tale of the film lies in its lasting influence on horror storytelling. The movie's grim storyline about a mutated newborn and its violent rampage deeply affected audiences, sparking discussions about the ethics of genetic manipulation and the repercussions of scientific exploration. This compelling premise, along with its graphic visuals, left a strong impression on viewers and solidified its status as a beloved cult classic. Directed by Larry Cohen, the film delves into themes of parenthood, accountability, and the fear of the unknown. Cohen's innovative narrative approach and his skill in building tension with minimal resources elevated the movie beyond typical horror offerings. With its gritty atmosphere and chilling soundtrack, the film mesmerized audiences and prompted them to question the boundaries of science and ethics. In summary, the 1974 movie remains a haunting cautionary tale about the dangers of interfering with nature and the outcomes of uncontrolled scientific ambition. Its tragic storyline and thought-provoking themes continue to resonate with audiences, securing its place in the history of horror cinema.